so happy that that was confirmed with the polygraph that I'm a psychopath. <laughs> Let's see what these celebrities are really like. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Vanity Fair lie detector tests. Do you read reviews of your performances in movies? Good ones. But not the bad ones? Every once in a while I'll take a peek at the bad ones to see how bad it is. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're ranking the famous Vanity Fair lie detector videos based on popularity and quality. We'll be considering the difficulty of the questions, the depth of the answers, and the personality of the celebrity. You sound so disappointed. <laughs> Number 10, Taraji P. Henson and Tracy Morgan. We're friends, right? Yes. Best friends? No. This is one of the wildest episodes of the series, that's for sure. The two celebrities tend to go off script, and most of the questions devolve into Taraji yelling at Tracy for something. Unfortunately, their personalities can't shoulder an otherwise poor video. There were a few non-yes or no questions that muddled the flow, but that being said, there were still quite a few good moments. For instance, there was Tracy shutting down Taraji's dream of being a sitcom star, and Taraji lying about Tracy being an influential figure. It's a fun way to spend 13 minutes, and the fact that it often veers wildly off course makes it even more fun. Do you like me, Tracy? Love you. I don't like you. I love you. Number 9. Wanda Sykes Wanda Sykes is definitely more composed than either Taraji or Tracy, which makes for a more focused and interesting video. And unlike Henson and Morgan, we learned more interesting tidbits about Wanda's personal life and personality. For example, she seems to like one of her twins more than the other, and she thinks she's above flying coach. Do you think you're better than me because I fly coach? Yes. We also learned that Wanda thinks quite highly of herself, as she believes she's funnier than Chris Rock and Larry David, and maybe even Julia Louis-Dreyfus. Do you think you're funnier than this guy? Writing, no. What about stand-up? Yes, I'd crush it. And damn it, Wanda Sykes isn't a spicy meme lord. Now that is a gut punch if we've ever heard one. Would you say you're a spicy meme lord? I have no idea what you just asked me. Number eight, Colin Jost and Michael Che. Are you nervous about this interview? Not really, no. <laughs> the Colin Jost and Michael Che episode is quality stuff, and the fact that it has over 2 million views certainly demonstrates that. Colin and Michael have fantastic chemistry and are effortlessly funny. Even the polygraph lady was cracking up, and she almost never breaks her facade. <laughs> oh, okay, I got, I got one, I got one. We learned that Colin lives a very secretive life, he thinks he's better than Michael because he went to Harvard, and he holds a few crazy political opinions that he's too afraid to share. Michael, on the other hand, came across as a total sweetheart. SNL will never die as long as these two are involved. You're yelling at a machine right now. Number seven, Dakota Johnson. Well, well you can edit that out. I don't think so. Okay, you can say I'm a liar, <laughs> okay, big lie. You're gonna be fine. The Dakota Johnson episode is quite the experience. The lighting is golden and radiant, and Dakota's voice is quiet and almost angelic. We learned that Dakota has the hots for Chris Hemsworth, but not John Hamm, sorry John Hamm, as well as whether she was starstruck by Justin Timberlake when she worked with him. So you just played it cool. Yes. One of the most memorable parts was when she was asked a question about the Illuminati, and the machine went bonkers. Dakota offered up a creepy smile and seemingly recoiled in defense after glancing at the spiking polygraph. Hmm, interesting. Are you or anyone in your family part of the Illuminati? No. Number six, Mark Wahlberg. The first half of this interview consists of the usual stuff. Mark Wahlberg has pretended to be Matt Damon, he writes rap songs, and he thinks his Transformers movies suck. There's literally two screens at once to really I can make a fair assessment of that. Is that honest? But then things get serious. We learn that Mark apparently has affiliates in the Israeli government, and the polygraph goes haywire when he denies being a spy. Are you an agent of the Israeli government? I have affiliates in the Mossad, yes. <laughs> Good one, Mark. His body language also seems to betray his lie, as he gets flustered and sweaty and starts to crack jokes to ease the tension. He also never talks to anyone online and never hangs out with his coworkers. This dude is clearly up to some super secretive stuff. So you never hang out with this man outside of work? 
I would like to, but he doesn't return my calls. Number five, Tiffany Haddish. Tiffany says that she tells the truth too much, and that certainly seems to be the case. Would anyone describe you as a diva? No. I don't think so. I haven't thrown phones at nobody or anything. Not yet, anyway. We don't think she told a single lie. And she was honest about having to pee and go number two at the beginning of the interview. Any interview that starts like that is a winner in our eyes. This episode was a total roller coaster. Tiffany spoke fluent Japanese, cried about being a hoarder, and stated that she accidentally danced an old man to death. I didn't kill him. I didn't kill him. Let's be honest. I didn't kill him. The energy, the electricity, the, the excitement. But he died on his own. He killed himself. I just did. Tiffany also came across as a super down-to-earth and relatable person, which was definitely nice to see. If you're not a Tiffany Haddish fan, you need to watch this episode because it will change your opinion in an instant. Have you been truthful this entire time? I'm pretty sure I have, yes. Have I? Number four, Melissa McCarthy. Are you Melissa McCarthy? Yes. I don't know why I stopped. Okay, I won't talk to you. Melissa McCarthy appears to be the most wholesome guest to appear on the series. She doesn't seem to hold any secrets, she's not a spy, and she's definitely not in the Illuminati, although she does believe in it. Melissa keeps the proceedings light and fluffy, often glancing at the polygraph machine and making some type of funny face or commenting on its cryptic movements. Is there... Oh. She also clearly loves her husband and co-stars, and she seems proud of her work and the comedy business in general. It's always nice to see a celebrity being so relatable, and this episode proved that Melissa McCarthy is one of the sweetest ladies in the game. At any point in this interview, did you lie? And we didn't catch you? N no. Unless it's now. Number three, David Dobrik. You nervous? No. <laughs> yes, 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 I am. This video should have been titled, David Dobrik has a 15 minute panic attack, cause the dude is tense. But his nervousness only makes him more adorable, and it adds a lot of personality to the video. This episode takes us on a wild journey through David's life, from growing up in Slovakia and having his pet bunnies butchered for food, to admitting to his high school crush. Were you sad when your family ate your pets? We also delve into his personal life and beliefs. For example, he's still sad about the breakup with Liza Koshy, and he thinks that YouTube is full of sellouts. Is it true that she broke up with you? Yes. This episode has it all. A fantastic guest, some unique stories, and insight into the world of YouTube and content creators. Number two, Wiz Khalifa. Are you about to take a polygraph exam? Do I have to say yes? Can I say, like, exactly? I love weed. So opens the interview with a stoned Wiz Khalifa, who proceeds to answer a lot of interesting questions surrounding his marijuana use. Yes, he smokes all hours of the day. Yes, he smokes more than Snoop Dogg. And yes, he spends over $10,000 a month on weed. Mm -hmm. Is that still true? It's probably more now. But it's not all about weed. For example, Wiz waxes philosophical by saying now is just then, and that later can't be now. Okay, we take it back, it mostly is about weed. But what makes this episode so genuine is that Wiz comes across as just another everyday guy. He watches cartoons, he plays video games, and he loves his family. In short, he seems like a really good dude, and a really high one. Stoned is the way to go. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Is it true you have four kids? Yes. Which one is your favorite? Uh, you, I, I can't say I have a favorite. I mean, like now, sir. I have a, sir, the needles are dancing the macarena. <laughs> Come on. Is uh, Canadian bacon better than American bacon? No. <laughs> you. <laughs> you made me turn on my own country. Canadian bacon's weird. It's ham. I carried him like twenty blocks. There's nothing worse than six foot three dead weight Lee Pace slung over a brother's shoulder walking down the streets of Manhattan. Is this man uh, your best friend? Yes, but you are also my best friend. I could have two best friends. That's 100. Number one, Jennifer Lawrence. Are you about to take a polygraph exam? Yes. This is by far the most popular video in the series, and it's pretty easy to see why. It is Jennifer Lawrence after all. 
Luckily, the episode itself is well worth a watch. Jennifer makes for a great, albeit very nervous guest, and she comes across as a good person. Would you date a non-celebrity? Yes. I'm getting increasingly nervous. Okay. We get little tidbits about her personal life, like the fact that she doesn't tip very well, and we also learn that she's aware of her negative reputation. I don't want to do it. Okay, anyway. It gives the episode a bit of a sad tone, almost as if she needs to prove that she's a good person. This episode humanizes one of Hollywood's biggest stars, and it helps us see the real Jennifer Lawrence underneath all the glitz and glamour. Oh jeez, oh god, I'm a bad tipper, okay? I can't believe I'm rich and a bad tipper. That's heartbreaking, okay. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.